The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. Today, uh, the importance of the, t the day is uh, I was invited to ta uh, talk about the day. Uh, today is the Vesak day uh, in uh, most countries. Uh, Sri Lanka and Myanmar took uh, the Vesak Day as uh, yesterday, 18th. I think Thailand and some other countries take uh, the 19th as uh, uh, Vesak Day. So the Vesak Day is uh, the day uh, uh, according to the, uh, Lord Buddha's uh, life story. Uh, he born uh, on uh, Vesak Poya Day. Vesak Poya Day is, uh, I must tell, this Vesak Poya is the uh, uh, second uh, full moon day in uh, uh, hot season. So that is how uh, we identify this uh, Vesak Day. So, uh, according to the, the ancient Indian tradition, uh, this uh, uh, the the whole year divided into three seasons. So, the uh, the the hot season, second uh, full moon day is the Vesak day, uh, Vesak uh, full moon day. So, according to the Lord Buddha's uh, life story or the, the what comes in uh, uh, ancient scripts says uh, the three important events has happened in this Vesak day. So the first thing is the birth of uh, Siddhartha Gautama, the uh, son of uh, uh, Suddhodana, the king Suddhodana and the queen Maya. The second uh, important event is uh, uh, the enlightenment of uh, Siddhartha Gautama. Then he became the Buddha. So that is uh, after uh, 35 years of the birth. So he became the Buddha. So the final thing is uh, he attained Parinibbana. Parinibbana means the, the total extinguishment or the end of uh, samsara. So he end his this long samsaric journey by attaining Parinibbana. That is uh, normally say that is the most important event of his life because it ends the whole mass of suffering to him. So the total extinguishment. So we co commemorate these uh, three events of Buddha on this Vesak uh, Poe Day. This is uh, an important uh, day f in uh, Buddhist calendar. So uh, it is uh, important to remember these days because it uh, remember us the qualities of Buddha and the final attainment of Parinibbana. Because uh, the, the Lord Buddha's teachings, the importance of the Lord Buddha's teaching is he taught us how to end all suffering. How this suffering arises within us and how to end it. So this, uh, the, the, the reality regarding our existence. So, so remembering these events also so uh, give an uh, idea that we can end suffering. The people could end suffering before, and someone taught us how to end suffering of this life. So sometimes people, they all, always people, try to find out the, the happiness in this life. So we, from the beginning of our life, we try to find happiness. So we, we were taught in many different ways 
how to get happiness so we follow those teachings from our birth so that is how we go in samsara even when we reach our death moment we know how to live better than this life because our knowledge is always updating so our knowledge has no end so we get we gather knowledge and we try to be happy more and more by applying many different methods so that is how this samsara works once you reach to your end of this life you have you know something better than now so you you want to try out another life and live the to reach better happiness to a- attain better happiness so but lord buddha taught us until you exist in this world suffering can't avoid it is something uh, it is a part of this existence so this is a important teaching so lord buddha say if you can totally extinguish this existence or the end this existence then you can uh, liberate from suffer, suffering total suffering so there is no more existence no more you exist anywhere so this is sometimes people d- d- do not want to practice that kind of uh, thing because people want to exist why because all this the existence related understanding based on delusion not understanding the reality of existence who exist here how this existence happen here so it is important to uh, understand the nature of this uh, natural phenomena within ourselves sometimes we think we exist i experience this world i experience uh, through my five senses and my mind but this body and mind or the or the the six sense bases are a natural phenomena it is not belongs to anyone it just arises depending on causes and conditions and always the nature of this sense bases are changing depending on causes and conditions the internal six sense bases and external six sense bases that is how lord buddha taught us try to explain us this natural phenomena within ourselves so these things uh, i think you have heard about a lot of this kind of dhamma talks so you may have some level of understanding so i would like to remind in this uh, vesak day how to uh, remember us this dhamma and uh, the understanding of this dhamma or remembering this dhamma within ourselves uh, leads to see this world in a different view because our day to day life we live with this uh, normal in day to day life uh, we we see this world in a totally different way we try to get happiness through this uh, five sense world objects or enjoy with the mind this is how the whole world runs but lord buddha taught us all these five senses and uh, all forms feelings perceptions and volitions related to this five sense world are suffering the basically the this consciousness means suffering if you can totally extinguish this consciousness and all forms feelings perceptions and volitions then you can extinguish suffering because that is the nature of this uh, uh, consciousness this is that is the nature of this existence so lord buddha say in uh, in uh, paticca samuppada the causality the co- 
um, dependent origination, the ignorance or avicca, not understanding the reality, is the is the root cause to having us the volition and consciousness. Because we we don't understand the suffering nature of this consciousness. So that's why Lord Buddha say, when you are, if you understand this one, you don't worry about what is happening in the present moment. You can let go things, and be happy with without any forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions. So you have to train your mind to bear this view within yourself and use it as much as you can. Because when you are living in your day-to-day -day life, some, sometimes you have to deal with your body and the other people and other living beings in this, in this world. In the same time, uh, you have to live in this world with, uh, uh, with other people and other living beings. And uh, it is a part of your existence. So wh while you are existing, you have to suffer. But no need to worry about suffering. It is a part of your existence. So, so if you understand this nature of existence, you don't suffer much because suffering is a part of your mentality. If you understand this reality, you can let go things. When you have to do something, you do it in kind, soft and gentle mind. And when you have a free time, you can let go all thoughts and free, free your mind and uh, live or maintain your mind without thoughts or, uh, or practice uh, the uh, fade away things, let the things fade away and be free your mind. So this is how... Uh, I can say in brief, this uh, the Lord Buddha's teachings, how we take it and practice, how we uh, use it in our day-to-day -day life. So it is important to understand the suffering nature of this existence and the cause of suffering because this uh, consciousness Normally, be, uh, the, the, uh, the, it worked uh, in such a way. Consciousness arises because the base of the base of uh, consciousness is ignorance, not understanding the reality. That is how our consciousness come to exist in this world. You come to the the person, uh, uh, anyone come to the mother's womb, and come to, the, uh, to having this body, and you are existing in this world in that way. So once you have these five senses and mind sense, so the suffering nature is there. Because whatever thing you experience in this world is subject to change and vanish. In the same time, your consciousness is also subject to change. So the Therefore, the forms, feelings, perceptions, whatever thing you perceive in this present moment, also change. The, the volitions also change. So therefore, the suffering nature within the system. So once you attach to one thing, once it change, you feel, oh, it is suffering. So that is the part of existence. So, so there are, if you understand this reality, you can't avoid this one. So only way to avoid this thing is just let go things and be happy with whatever thing you experience. So accept the reality and be happy with the reality. So then you can develop your mind to let go things and be free from suffering. So that's why Lord Buddha say. If you if you practice this one mindfully, if you practice the 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 right effort, then you can achieve the right mindfulness. The right mindfulness is the four satipatthanas. That is uh, mindfulness 
about your body, mindfulness of your uh, f- uh, feeling, mind- mindfulness of your mind, and mindfulness of the this uh, the the dhamma, the reality. So if you are mindful of these things, so you can liberate your mind from all attachments towards these uh, five aggregates. Five aggregates means forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions, and consciousnesses. So you are naturally your mind attached to these things because this mind runs based on delusion. Once you cut off this, uh, the, once you... Uh, uh, practice the understanding of this reality your mind naturally is released from all these attachments and it uh, the first the, the thoughts go fade away and then totally release your mind from these attachments so when you are practicing first thing you experience is uh, attachments to the five senses are released at the beginning. So once you completely release from your five senses, that is called you are attaining jhanas. Once you attain jhana means you are totally released from five sense world. So that is a great experience for a, uh, uh, the person who, who born in this world as a human. It is a great experience. Lord Buddha says, it is a uttari manusa dhamma. The meaning of uttari manusa dhamma is you are go beyond this human world. Go beyond with this existence as a human. And you enter to the uh, rupa loka. Rupa loka is the only there is form you feel, the fine materiality. You you perceive only the fine materiality related to your mind, not the five sense world. So once you achieve this uh, goal, that means you know how to let go your five sense world. And then you experience you are living something apart from your five sense world. So five senses, then you understand you are not the five senses. Five senses is something else. So th- once you uh, start thinking about these five senses, uh, about five senses of yours as yours, then you come back to your five sense world and you, you uh, dwell among the five senses again. That is called the the panchadwara avajjana so you are uh, adverting your five senses and you come back so lord buddha say once you uh, practicing this uh, seven bojangas these uh, f- seven enlightenment factors you are naturally understand the reality related to your five senses the reality real related to your existence and how this consciousness arises within yourself and how you can let go it or totally liberate from your five sense world. And when you are coming back to five sense world again, you know how it arises within yourself. Samudaya dhamma nupasiva vihirati, vaya dhamma nupasiva vihirati. This thing you can, that is how these things arise within yourself, how these things totally extinguish. You you clearly experience this thing when you attain jhanas and come back to five sense world. Go to attain jhanas and come back to five sense world. So Lord Buddha showed us this path from right view to right stillness or right samadhi. First, if you are practicing this right view or if you are using all the time in your life, this right view, then you cultivate the right attitude towards the world, or right thought, or right uh, intention towards the world. So once you are practicing this right intention, naturally 
the, the right speech, right bodily action, and right livelihood come behind that right, right thought. So that is the nature of this path. The important thing is practicing right view. So you have to understand the right view and use it as much as you can. Because the reality is you are not existing in this world. There's, you is the wrong understanding. This mind arises within ourselves depending on causes and conditions. The karma, the past volitions are one of the most important uh, conditions arise in the present moment. So now you listen to Dhamma and uh, have uh, Chanda. Chanda means uh, they have your consent to use this Dhamma. Oh, this is correct. This is right. I must use this view. So this is one volition. But you, are pra you practiced early lot of other volitions also. So when an object comes to your mind, which volition come first? That is the important thing. If you have if you maintain your intention to practice this right view, it gradually starts growing within yourself. So that means you are you give the chanda or the, the choice to practice this right view. So it gradually starts uh, growing within yourself. It is a part of the process. You should understand there is no I exist. So you, therefore you no need to worry if any other karma comes and ripens within yourself and you do something foolish. Or foolish means the, the greed, hatred arise within yourself. But if you, once you are uh, mindful about that uh, unwholesome states and same time you have the intention to practice the right view, that's enough. Just you can let go your past and be with the present moment with the right mindfulness and uh, the practicing the right view because you are not exist you the i me myself is not exist here only the the, the cause and condition uh, flow of causes and conditions are exist this is a this is the, the, the natural phenomena. It is going on always. So, so if you understand this concept and if you using, if you are using it, so you can liberate your mind at any moment when you are mindful about this reality. That is called yoniso manasikara. If you have the yoniso manasikara. You can liberate yourself at any time and make your mind free. This is the right way of practicing Buddhism. That means the uh, Sampajanya. If you are practice, you can practice Satisampajanya in your day-to-day -day life. But when you sit for the meditation, you have to practice Satipatthana. You you establish your mindfulness. On your body, feelings, and mind, and the Dhamma, the reality. So you sa start seeing things in such a way. But in your day-to-day -day life, you have to, to remember yourself, this, the reality, what uh, the Buddha taught us. Then the Dhamma means the Lord Buddha's teachings and what is happening within yourself is Dhamma. And uh, the Sangha is the people who practice this path 
without having proper understanding sangha is atta purusa puggala esa bhagavato saavaka sangha the the people who uh, understand the path that is the 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 people who understand this path is the first person who enter to the path and the second person is the person who attain the stream that is called stream mina so this this all this this is the beginning so the the other other uh, six persons also exist so this so the person the ones who listen to dhamma and you are start practicing this dhamma in this way so your mind get released and if you see when you are practicing this dhamma you can uh, avoid greed hatred and in the same time delusion delusion means they not knowing what is happening here so you you see the happiness in your heart because if there is no greed and hatred naturally your mind become happy if there is greed and hatred you are natural naturally you are become suffering person so if you are mindful about the reality or if you are if you use this view or you or if you are using this knowledge then you can release your mind in the present moment so lord buddha say if when you are practicing dhamma if it is leads to release your mind or or avoid uh, the abandon this greed hatred and then delusion so it should uh, you you must abide to that practice you must follow that practice you must follow that teaching it is beneficial for you it leads to much more deeper understanding and it it may leads to total liberation so lord how that lord buddha taught us so in this vesak day it is important to understand this important three factors this is uh, the anicca dukkha anatta this is the impermanent nature or the 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 changing nature of these five aggregates and uh, this the six sense bases and the 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 non self nature of these five sense bases and these five aggregates this is the most important thing to keep in mind and the suffering nature always this is suffering this impermanent because it is impermanent and it is not non self nature and this uh, because these two natures it is always suffering suffering means all forms feelings perceptions and volitions and consciousnesses leads to suffering so so if you know this reality you don't worry about what is happening within yourself or what is you are experiencing in this world so you are you can maintain to la- maintain your uh, the, the mind lo- loving kindness and uh, the in other words the the peacefulness of your mind peace and uh, happiness in your mind you can maintain peacefulness and happiness in your mind can maintain if you are mindful about this nature of our life so if you have any any questions you can ask so we have 20 more minutes so
Yeah. yeah. So I don't know whether you understand anything, but yes. I'm. T- <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it is good to ask so questions. Then you can clarify. Get a clarification. Um, hello, Bante. Hello, Bante. Thanks for the teaching. Uh, you were talking about uh, letting go and uh, nibbana. Yeah. And yesterday I was reading the Ratana Sutta. Yes. And uh, there was some uh, phrase uh, regarding nibbana in the Ratana Sutta that I didn't quite understand. Shall yeah. I tell you the stanza? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Yes, apita manasa dalene nikamo gotamasa. Uh, yeah, gotamasa sanang. Yeah. That, that, uh, and it uh, basically it goes on. Te pati pata amatamidaya, ladda mudani butim punjamana. That part was translated as nibbana freely obtained. Nibbana freely obtained. Freely obtained. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't quite understand what's meant by that Nibbana freely obtained. Yeah, the free, freely obtained. No, I, actually, I have to study this uh, stanza because I can't remember exactly <laughs> what it says. The freely obtaining means the... Actually... I don't actually. I I can't understand this. Um, uh, amata mida amata mida ladda bunjamana idampi sange ratanam pani tang etin sachin swa. Because freely, and uh, actually, this uh, uh, nibbana is freeing your mind. That means, uh, if a person attain uh, nirodha, he is releasing, totally releasing the mind. Re- releasing mind means uh, first, once you attain jhanas, you totally extinguish the five sense world. Only you have the mind world. Mind world means the uh, forms related to the fine material realm, not the five sense world. So, in that stage, you your feelings and perceptions are totally related to the fine material realm. So, no five sense world in the activity there. So, once you go there by uh, not adverting five senses, you get the understanding that you all these consciousnesses can abandon by not adverting the senses. So, we, naturally this system depends on five senses. Once you come to existence in this world as a human, Human is a being with five senses. So mind sense is behind that. So the five senses run by this mind sense. So these five senses are the 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 the, the senses which deal with this this world. So if you uh, uh, if you uh, get the understanding of the teaching of the reality. So you can cut off this, if you contemplate this anicca the nature of this five sense world, you can cut off the value of these five sense world objects and all forms, feelings, perceptions related to this five sense world. So then you can let go things related to five sense world. Then you are, your mind naturally become not depending on five senses. You just let go five senses. And all forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions related to five senses, you let go. 
basically you let go your five sense consciousnesses so then you liberate your mind from five sense world and you go to you are mind naturally attached to the mind world only mind sense there no five senses are there so that is called jhana the first jhana even in, at the first jhana there is a small volition to hold on the 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 mind world so later it also disappear in the second jhana because at the, at that stage it, the mind try to hold on to that stage because it is much pleasure pleasurable that than the five senses were thank so, you so the, the go once you go beyond that level once you understand this reality all these five senses this consciousnesses can let go you can release from these five senses by non adverting these things so then you your mind naturally tends to that understand the, the, once you gain that understanding and the lord buddha's teachings your mind naturally tends to let go the mind sense also and liberate your mind mind sense means that at that stage in jhana stages only the, on, when you come to the fourth jhana you have only the uh, 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 only the the perception and uh, and uh, feeling feelings and perceptions are only there in in fourth jhana stage you experience only feelings and perceptions no volitions there so that experience then then you know these things also can let go so then if when you are practicing in that way if you have that understanding your mind if you if you gain that the reality by experiencing this five sense the to experiencing jhanas and attaining jhanas and come back to the five sense world and go back to the jhana stage and come back so you naturally gain that understanding okay i can let go this this too also so this let go that one also then sanya vedita nirodha can attain by that way so that's why lord buddha say you can attain the total extinguishment of this existence then there is mind also extinguish you can extinguish again you come back to this five sense world or first you come back to the the the, the feelings and perceptions world this is mind mind world and then come back to the five sense world after the nirodha samapatti thank you man Yeah. Now the question is, uh, this one called a temporary state of nirvana and the Mahimbana. Uh, now temporary state. If one practices the now the emphasis on easily obtain, I mean yeah. that is the thing that uh, confuses a lot of people. Uh, but there are two states of nirvana. I can please correct me. Yeah. That is temporary. you are either you are in the state of jhana yeah or even otherwise if you practice uh, vipassana yeah. if you have a state of non self even for a moment yeah that is state of nibbana there is no self there you see so um, if you look at a uh, lot of uh, sutras in angurta nikaya angurta yeah. nikaya buddha yeah. says you can attain uh, uh, nibbana temporary states of nibbana so that is different from permanent state of nibbana that is not having experiencing a self there is no as you said no sense basis uh, no understand the dependent origination there is no interaction with the world so that is what it says easily obtain what's obtained is a temporary state do you have to go to jhanas to experience this or can you do it without getting to jhanas actually this um, the temporary states of uh, nibbana by living in this five sense world is actually a just a perception another kind of a perception that uh, with the liberation that means you are free for a moment but you it is there is no stability in it so the jhana jhana stages are much more stable it is not just rise and pass away so you know 
you can exist at that stage. It is not something like a wave come and go. It is a stable point. That's why I say samapatti. So, so experiencing for a moment is something good because then you know, yes, it is possible. Then you get the courage to practice properly and practice satipattana properly and attain jhana. Jhana is the proper stage of total extinguishment experience. The five sense world ex extinguishment, you experience it. And it is a stable stage. And you experience the happiness within that stage. That is important. Because your mind is not yours. It is just a natural phenomena. That proper conditioning come to you when you really experiencing jhanas. Because then you know it is a stable stage and it is a happy stage. And uh, then you, you can't revert your mind because you, your mind experiences it. You know it. So no one can say no, that no such a thing exists. Or it is not like that because it is your personal experience. So that's why Lord Buddha showed us a path ending with these jhana stages. So you, with only practicing vipassana is not enough because only practicing vipassana is good for attaining jhanas. Once you're attaining, yeah, attaining jhanas, without attaining jhanas, you, you, ne you have no proper understanding that you can exist, you can totally extinguish at least five senses. Because you, once you attain jhanas, you have clear understanding. You can totally extinguish your five senses. It is possible. It is a reality. But when you just doing vipassana and you haven't attained jhanas, that means your vipassana is not fulfilled. Your vipassana is not come to the proper stage. You have to do vipassana continuously until you attain jhanas. Because that is the purpose of the path. It is, part of the path is vipassana. That is satipattana. Once you practice satipattana, you understand how these things and rise and pass away and how we have to abandon. If you have the right view with the satipattana, this actually satipattana should have the right view. If you have the right view, then you see all these forms, feelings, perceptions as suffering. So then you let go. It is not yours. It is a part of the phenomena. You are not the owner of these things. You can let go. You are not attached to these things. The, the important thing is cutting off the attachment towards these forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions, and consciousnesses. Because we, if, until we are taking these things as my, our things, we are attached to it. We try to control it. We try to make it better. But if you are not related to these things, your I doesn't exist here. This is a natural phenomenon I am watching. So these, all these things, when, until we are attaching to these things, we suffer. If we, can let, if we are not related to us, just let go. Let it be. Then you can release your mind from attaching to things. Because Lord Buddha said, you have to, uh, the third noble truth is the chago patinisago muttyanalyo. Patinisago means the sabbupadi patinisago. The old attachments you have to let go. Sabbupadi patinisago. All attachments should let go. So how do we, how we can do it? The cutting of the craving. <coughs> craving based on delusion. Not understanding the reality. Because this is a natural phenomena. We, we have no right to say, if you, if you clearly uh, consider this uh, anatta nature within ourselves, these consciousnesses are not work according to our wish. It, it actually drives by the causes and conditions. So yeah, now the, I have, I think, no time to 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 talk about this. Uh, how we can understand in 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 our day to day life, this consciousness is actually not drive by us. I can tell you a small thing. Sometimes when you see uh, advertisement, 
in in a television or something sometimes your consciousness say oh this is good i have to get this one so so the external inputs can quickly turn your mind to 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 a different direction your consciousness can drive by the other external objects very soon this is simple thing it is not yours someone else come and scold you then you get angry <laughs> <laughs> the other external objects can quickly drive you so these your consciousness are not yours it is a part of this world so these things you have to understand if you understand this nature then you deal with your objects in a wise way just let it go let it be <laughs> not to not to agitate not to not to follow the volitions arise within yourself just let it be let it go so that's why lord buddha say dhamma and vinaya too the vinaya is the way how to deal with these things the basics of the vinaya is pachavekana think wisely and do it whether it is need <laughs> otherwise let it be let it go no need to follow your volitions arise within your heart the volitions is the one which agitate your mind volition is the one which drives you avijja pachya sankara means the meaning because the not knowing the reality you follow your volitions then your consciousness start working <laughs> if you don't follow the if you if you keep your mind this this the, this is avijja this is all the whole system runs by avijja then the volitions arise within yourself you don't worry you use it whether it is it is needed otherwise you just let go then you free your mind and you free at that moment that's why you have to keep pacha vikana because we have to maintain our bodies we have to deal with other people so therefore uh, we have to work according to the situation we have to uh, act our, we have to maintain our uh, verbal action bodily action and our right livelihood we have to maintain it according to the situation according to your present moment situation that's all so not for for having some happiness in future just for existence the because you can't get happiness from this any of these uh, forms feelings perceptions or volitions you can get the happiness by total extinguishment that is the right view that is how to practice right view if you try to find out happiness uh, among this world this five sense world or the uh, among these forms feelings perceptions and volitions and consciousnesses you never get the happiness you are go in samsara you can't end the samsara that is the lord buddha stage so if you have any more questions ask <laughs> <laughs> is it what do you did say that uh, satipatthana is a part of the practice yes but buddha says uh, it is a kaino bakko that is the practice yes it is a part of the practice it is a step of the practice not you, the practice huh? it, it is not the practice it is a it is a part of the practice you have to read the, the whole the teachings of buddhas Be, because buddha always to, talk about the eight factors of noble eightfold path it is not only one factor it should get the support of the other factors without having the first factor you never achieve the 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 sixth the seventh factor it is Im- very important to practice the the previous the uh, uh, predecessor yeah the other other the 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 factors of the path is much more important to achieve the satipatthana otherwise you don't even understand what is satipatthana is but that is the finale isn't it huh? that is the finale that is the yeah. ultimate yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no the, the the once you practice satipatthana if you don't get the uh samadhi if you don't get the samadhi 
you just practice satipatthana always that means you are practicing the the seventh factor of noble eightfold path but you don't get the 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 samma samadhi your practice is not fulfilled <laughs> that is something lack lord, lord buddha if you can finish by seven factors lord buddha will tell it first because lord buddha never make these things complicated he is the he is the teacher of the 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 deva and manusa the, the humans and the the devas he is the teacher of the the humans and manusas the humans and devas so he know what to teach to people human so that's why he taught this uh, noble eightfold path he clearly say this the the eight factor of the noble eightfold path means that is uttari manusa dhamma you are go beyond the human world then you see what is human world is how it arise here and how it extinguish totally ex- ex- extinguish so you experience the reality within yourself then no one can say oh that is wrong that is not correct because you experience the difference between these two and how it happens within yourself samudaya dhamma anupassiva virati vaya dhamma samudaya vaya dhamma you start seeing that's why lord buddha say you have to attain this uh, eight uh, the uh, seven bodhangas this is seven enlightenment factors again and again again and again then you clearly see what is going on here so how how these things extinguish how these things arise within yourself then you understand the reality then you your mind naturally tends to let go the feelings and perceptions also then you at, attain the total extinguishment then you see you have nothing to do beyond that you know how to totally extinguish this one suffering bante i have a question about mindfulness yes if you are doing something fast can you maintain mindfulness while something if you are doing a, if you are for, for example if you are at work and you are doing a task that has to be quick yeah can you still maintain mindfulness yeah. during that yeah actually yes because if you are mindful about the work if your mind not distract you can work very fast if your mind is distracting the attention is diverting to different objects then you can't work fast you think you work fast but you don't work fast <laughs> so if your your thoughts are with the task that is called mindfulness is that right yeah the, the mindfulness means the mindfulness regarding some one object means your mind only focus attention to one object one thing okay one thing at a time at least thank you so you have to train your mind to to do it because the mind is naturally distracted because this is this is how this existence was the normal world we use our all five senses so the our mindfulness all always going round and round these things at least ditta sutta muta vinyata ditta sutta muta vinyata means the, the eye consciousness ear consciousness these things always go and the other the, the uh, muta is the, the the tongue and body nose tongue and body is muta and vinyata the mind consciousness this the actually mind is one thing so this one the get the consciousness from all these things changing so that's why the my uh, one should train mind to focus to one object and let go all others so the right view is the base because the val- we are valuing our five senses and our five consciousnesses that's why mind always the the going behind these consciousnesses and get the because we rely on these five senses if you understand the right view then you you can cut off the value of these five senses and release your mind from five senses okay ask so, uh, next, next, next 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 
Okay. Bhante, now you said that um, all the five senses go away when you have the jhana, but isn't the consciousness experience in this Preeti Sukha Ekagata? Who is experiencing this? Yes. So, the, yeah, experience the means mind. You mind. are experience defined by the mind, feelings, perceptions, and volitions. If your body only there, so the if you talk about the body consciousness, if the body only there, it it never experience anything. But the consciousness should be there. Consciousness means volition, the the the, the perception, uh, no feelings, perceptions, mainly, and then volitions behind that. If there is no the uh, uh, perceptions, feelings, and volitions, that means you are not experiencing anything. Can you understand? Once you let go of this five sense world, yes. your mind consciousness is only there. Yes. So you are experiencing not the five sense world yes. objects, but you are experiencing the mind world objects. That is fine material. So objects. this is the mind, mind world that is experienced. Maya, yeah. Thank you. Next one. Yeah. Bhante, my question is about suffering. Yes. What is your advice for people suffering in abusive relationship and bullying in workplace or bullying at school? Uh, what is the level that they can tolerate the suffering before you know they do something and fight back? Thank you. Yeah, this is uh, the, the. If a child is suffering because this kind of situation, so the we have to, if we can educate that child to bear that one, bear that one means he be kind, soft, and gentle to the person who is bullying him. It is good, but sometimes uh, children also can't understand this kind of thing. So then the, the parents or the teachers should look after that kind of situation. That is my, my understanding. Because some, some, some children can get that understanding. You, one can teach the nature of this life a little bit and tell them to be kind, soft, and gentle to the person who is make him suffer, make him uh, the annoying. So sometimes if he can understand it and practice in that way, sometimes he can solve the problem. Because the, the bully also becomes soft and gentle if the person who suffer also becomes soft and gentle. I, have, I, I know when we were school children, we also had this kind of problems. But when we soft and gentle and be kind to the people, they also can't act in that bad way. So and we we also show a different reaction sometimes bully is bullying because you are bullied you are you are acting in such a way so he enjoy that that uh, the reaction so if you react in a totally different or laugh or something what he never don't expect naturally the bully also change his rea his way of acting his action so it is good if you can teach these things to children because I, I, I have experience in my life. So I laugh to the bullies and sometimes they, they totally, their reactions start change. They, their way of acting change. That depends on the person. Sometimes you can. Because this karma is work in such a way. So you, uh, actually you can give an input, a good input to a, to a, to a person. To a, even a child, and then they understand and act in the right way. Yes, you must try it to teach Dhamma, the teach how this world works, and how we should react to a, to that kind of experience. Be kind, soft, and gentle. That is the most important thing. So, how to maintain our mind to be kind, soft, and gentle to other person? So, you 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 should say you can say, or maybe that. Children, that child has a, some problem in his home or so past karma. So he acting that way. Be kind, soft, and gentle. He will change soon. 
this these things will pass soon so he will not be acting forever he will change his uh, mentality soon so you have to be kinds of and gentle you have to bear that experience don't try to fight with him you can tell him to how to behave kinds of and gentle mind so that's that is the the right way of according to B- lord buddha's teachings <laughs>